Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on income taxes. A quick word of warning here first. Most people find this reading one of the hardest in the curriculum. And there is a point. If you try to do this reading from the curriculum, it will probably take you a while to get your arms around all the concepts and to really understand this well and unless you have a strong background in the subject uh, you need to be ready for uh, a rough reading however my suggestion is or at least my experience has been that the questions on this chapter that show up on the level one exam are not very difficult so if you have a lot of time read the curriculum but if not then just pay careful attention here and as long as you understand the main concepts there is a reasonable chance that you will be able to solve most of your problems on the exam let's first start with the concept of accounting profit taxable income and and the creation of deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities uh, a general remark first the reason we have this concept of deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities which you will see on an on a balance sheet of most companies is the fact that in most parts of the world the rules that you need to follow to prepare financial reports are different from the rules that are followed when you prepare tax returns just to give you a very simple example let's say that we are talking about a company that is preparing its financial reports using the international financial reporting standards and obviously it will prepare its tax reports using the tax laws of the country where it is operating and the, in fact the whole reason for this this reading is the difference between the tax rules and the IFRS or the accounting rules so let's take a simple example uh, let's say that in the tax world a given company uh, given the tax rules a company in year one records revenue of 200 whereas according to the tax rules the the revenue is only 100 why might this happen one possible reason is that as we have seen in earlier readings there are certain revenue recognition rules which say that you can record revenue even if you don't receive money so it is possible that as long as you meet the revenue recognition criteria you might have only received 100 million and the other 100 million might be credit sales which are logged as receivables but if you meet the revenue recognition criteria you can show your revenue total revenue of 200 which in our simplistic example comes from 100 million uh, cash sales and 100 million credit sales at the same time the tax authority might only recognize your cash revenue as taxable revenue so given the tax rules the revenue is only 100 in year one in our simplistic world let's say that the expenses are 50 million according to IFRS rules or accounting rules and also 50 million according to tax rules so in this simple world the rules for expense recognition are the same and then what happens to our accounting profit before tax so on the left we are looking at our uh, financial reporting world so our accounting profit or our profit before tax is 150 but on the on the tax rules side our taxable income is 50 now this distinction is important the distinction between taxable income and accounting profit so these terms are analogous so accounting profit or profit before tax is the term that we use in the context of financial reporting and taxable income is the term that we use in the context of tax reporting so on the tax document our before tax income is 50 on our accounting report the before tax income is 150 so on the financial reporting side 
if our tax rate is 20 percent then our tax expense is 30. Whenever you see the term expense that will generally imply that we are talking about the financial reporting side. So our tax expense is 30. This says that the in year one the tax that we think we should be paying is 30 million but given that on the tax reporting document our taxable income is 50 and given that our tax rate is 20 percent the tax payable which is the amount that we are actually liable to pay the government is only 10 million so notice that in year one there is a difference between the tax expense as reported on the financial report versus the tax payable which is the actual amount that we need to pay given the tax rules so it is this difference which will create it's it's when our tax expense and tax payable are different that's where we create deferred tax assets and liabilities so uh, just as a uh, aside in year one our accounting income is 120 our income after tax according to the tax report is only 40 million i'm going to say this here and then reinforce this point later but an important point to understand is whenever tax expense is greater than tax payable as we have over here tax expense greater than tax payable we create what's called a deferred tax liability or a DTL. This will be reversed in the future when tax expense is less than tax payable and we'll see that in a moment. But what I want to highlight here is the fact that we believe we should have paid, given our revenue recognition, we should have paid a tax of 30 but we only paid 10. So this benefit of 20 is essentially only a short uh, so so what's happening is what we are effectively saying is we should have paid 20 more that 20 more now is actually an obligation or a liability that we will need to pay later and since this is an obligation or something that we need to pay later that's why it's called a liability since it is related to tax and it's essentially a deferred tax it's therefore called a deferred tax liability Now this slide helps illustrate how the numbers reverse. So this again is year one reproduced. So this is what you, so this top half of the screen is what you've already seen before. Now let's see what's going to happen in year two, both on the, the financial reporting side as well as on the tax side. So let's say that in year two, we again make sales of 100 million but these are all cash sales but on the tax reporting side if you recall from before we had made in year one 100 cash and 100 million was credit sales so that 100 million that was shown as a receivable last year let's say that that showed up as cash in year two so we had the actual cash for year two sales which is the 100 plus the 100 which was receivables last year now comes in year two so according to the tax document this 100 from last year which was logged as revenue on the financial reporting side but not logged as revenue on the tax side is now shown as revenue in year two because we are actually receiving the cash so according to the tax document our revenue in year two is 200 even though the revenue according to the financial reporting is only 100 million the accounting expense again is 50 and 50 so the accounting profit on the financial reporting side is 50 but on the tax side given that our revenue is 200 and the expenses are 50 the taxable income is 150 and now notice that the tax payable the amount that we owe the government is 30 so this now is more than 
what we show on the financial reporting side and essentially the 20 million deferred tax liability now becomes due so notice that even though the expense on the financial reporting side is 10 we are actually paying a total of 30 so that's the 10 plus the deferred tax liability which is now becoming due so effectively what has happened is that sort of the the fact that in year one we paid 20 less than what we thought we should now in year two that reverses and we pay 20 more than what our tax expense says so the deferred tax liability that was created in year one gets reversed in year two so in this simplistic example uh, we don't have a deferred tax liability at the end of year two now here is another example that illustrates the creation of a deferred tax liability here let's say that in the top half of the screen you are looking at again financial reporting numbers and at the bottom half of the screen you are looking at tax reporting and let's say that a given company has uh, earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization EBITDA of a thousand for each year year one year two year three so EBITDA is let's say the same the only difference between our financial reporting and tax reporting in this simple example is how we deal with depreciation let's say that we got a asset for 600 that has a three-year life the salvage value is zero and on our financial report we use straight line depreciation so we'll depreciate 200 200 200 over the three years as shown over here on our tax report let's say that we are allowed accelerated depreciation and we depreciate 300 in the first year 200 in the second year and 100 in the third year in both cases the in, in the financial report as well as the tax report the total depreciation has to be the same it's just that on the tax side we can depreciate more earlier because tax reporting often allows accelerated depreciation so in year one on the financial report our pre-tax income is 800 and given a tax rate of 40 percent our tax expense is 320 whereas on the tax report our taxable income is 700 which is less and the tax rate is the same but our tax payable now is only 320 so notice here that there is a difference of 40 this 40 is a deferred tax liability because we are paying less than what we think we should and this 40 will reverse in the future so at some point in the future we'll have to pay 40 more than what our income tax expense shows so let's see what happens in year two in year two the depreciation on the financial report and the tax report is the same and so the tax expense as well as the tax payable are the same but in year three let's see what happens in year three the tax expense is still 320 but tax payable is 360 why is that it's because our depreciation of 100 now is less than what the straight line depreciation shows on the financial reporting side so the 100 is less than the 200 therefore our taxable income on the tax report is high and our tax payable is high so the deferred tax liability that we created in year one now gets reversed because effectively that obligation becomes due here in year three so this is another example of the creation of a deferred tax liability so to summarize a deferred tax liability is created whenever income tax expense is greater than income tax payable 
this is a liability because the tax will have to be paid later it is a future obligation there are several reasons why this might happen but the two most common and the ones you should be very familiar with are the two examples that we have spoken about uh, accelerated depreciation on the tax return versus straight line depreciation on the income statement and you just saw that example so in the first year you noticed that since we had accelerated depreciation on the tax return versus straight line on the income statement initially the income tax expense was greater than the income tax payable and this eventually reversed and the earlier example that you saw is another reason why we might create a DTL which was where revenue is recognized on the income statement before being included on the tax return so if you recall in year one our total revenue on the income statement was 200 versus on the tax return was only 100 and this also created a situation where initially the income tax expense was greater than the income tax payable a deferred tax asset is created when the income tax expense is less than income tax payable and this is an expense because uh, we are paying when income tax expense is less than income tax payable that means we are paying a higher tax now relative to what we think we should pay which means that we are reducing taxes in the future since in the future we will have a lower tax bill that's a benefit and hence recorded as a asset specifically it's called a deferred tax asset and again any time income tax expense is less than income tax payable we create a DTA the two major or most common reasons for this happening are number one whenever expense is recognized before being tax deductible so if an expense is recognized before being tax deductible for example a warranty expense so if initially we show warranty expense in our financial report that would result in versus so we show it on a financial report but let's say that the tax authority does not allow warranty to be shown as tax deductible until the warranty expense is actually incurred at a later point in time so initially in the first year where we show warranty on the financial report our income tax expense will then become less than income tax payable and we will end up paying more tax than what we think we should pay and that results in a deferred tax asset similarly if revenue is taxable before being recognized on the income statement so this is a situation where we have unearned revenue so if the cash is received and the tax authority then says pay tax so that means our income tax payable is high versus our income tax expense which is low so we'll have a situation where income tax expense is less than income tax payable and this creates a deferred tax asset because we are paying a high tax now the benefit is that at a later time we will be paying a lower tax now I will venture to guess that one of the most likely exam questions related to this chapter would be one that figures out whether you have understood this fundamental concept of how deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets are created the text the curriculum can become fairly complicated but as long as you understand this core concept you are already in pretty good shape now another concept that is uh, that that you should know is the difference between tax base and carrying value so these terms are analogous tax base is the term that's used in the context of tax reporting carrying value you have seen in the context of financial reporting so carrying value is simply the net book value of a asset so if you initially purchase an asset for 100 and let's say the depreciation in year one is 10 then your carrying value after one year is 90 so this is your carrying value or it's also referred to as net book value 
one year later if there's another depreciation of 10 the carrying value becomes uh, 80 so let's say that this is on your financial report on your tax report let's say that initially you are allowed to depreciate 20 so the at time t equal to 0 your tax base might be 100 but if you can depreciate 20 according to your tax rules then the tax base after one year will be 80 and so on so the tax base and carrying value are analogous it's just that if the rules are different on the financial reporting side and the tax side then the value of the assets are different or the value of the asset according to the tax report is different from the value of the asset on the financial report and and essentially as we'll see later it's differences between tax base and carrying amount that result in differences between accounting profits and taxable income so essentially the difference between tax base and carrying amount results in the fact that income tax expense is not the same as income tax payable and as we've seen whenever income tax expense is not the same as income tax payable we either create a deferred tax liability or a deferred tax asset so this again is a rather complicated area but I feel that if you understand the core point you'll be in decent shape so tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deducted or expensed as the economic benefit is realized so what does this definition mean all this is saying is that notice that this 80 if we are calling this the tax base this so according to the tax document now over the remaining life of this asset the 80 is what is going to be expensed through depreciation in the tax reporting context and differences arise between tax base and carrying value when we have different depreciation rules as we've already seen it can arise as a result of different rules related to R&D so for example if we take US gap then R&D expenses must generally be expensed so that would result in a carrying value for R&D equal to zero since we are expensing no asset is being created and hence there is no carrying value but let's say that our financial report or our, I'm sorry let's say our tax reporting allows some of these expenses to be capitalized then there will be some tax base let's say that uh, 1 million of your expense here can be capitalized so the tax base would be 1 million and then we will be able to amortize this tax base and that will result in differences between accounting profit and tax profit which in turn will result in differences between income tax expense and income tax payable with accounts receivable again there might be different rules on the financial reporting and the tax reporting side so if you have total receivables of 100 million on the financial reporting side you might recognize a loss of 5 million because you think that 5 million in receivables will probably not be collected and you want to simply recognize that as a loss whereas on the tax reporting side it might not be so easy to recognize this as a loss immediately so as long as you get the general idea that's good enough tax base of a liability is the value of a liability minus the amount that will be deductible in the future so let's take a simple example we have already seen from earlier lectures that unearned revenue is an example of a liability so let's say that on the financial reporting side at the end of 2010 we have unearned revenue equal to 10 million so if you recall unearned revenue means that you have received the cash but you've not delivered the service so according to financial reporting rules you cannot recognize this as revenue so you show it as a liability in 2010 but on the financial but on the tax reporting side typically if you receive the cash then you need to pay tax on it so what is the tax base of the unearned revenue 
that is equal to the unearned revenue which is 10 million in my example minus the amount that will not be taxed in the future so if in 2010 you actually pay tax on this 10 million because it's cash that you've received so you will not be paying tax on that 10 million in the future so your tax base for unearned revenue will be 10 minus 10 which is zero so effectively we are saying that going forward on that unearned revenue we will not be paying taxes in 2011 because we have already paid the tax in 2010 so that creates a difference between the tax base of the liability versus the carrying value of the liability similarly with warranty liability also we can have differences in the tax base and carrying value and i will emphasize this fundamental statement which is that the difference between the tax base and carrying amount is what results in uh, differences between income tax uh, expense and income tax payable and that's what creates deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets